credits of the news at 10. See Julie Etchcombe then. And now. Etchingham, we've taken the best from the past and built on News at 10's 40-year reputation for innovation and authority. A much-loved brand back with a fresh new look for the 21st century. And it is who built it and who can claim rights over it. This year, for the first time in 10 years, a select few will be allowed into the circle to mark the summer solstice. Our reporter, Julie Etchingham, is there. Well, good morning from the centre of Stonehenge, a spot where very few people are allowed to tread these days, especially on June the 21st, the summer solstice. But English Heritage, which runs the site, has said that this year a select few from several groups will be allowed into the centre, onto what is, for them, sacred ground. There can be few sites which evoke such a sense of awe and mystery. The theories behind the standing stones range from the seemingly logical to the mystical and bizarre. Stonehenge was built in three stages between 3150 and 50 BC, and although similar structures can be found elsewhere in Europe, it's unique because of the precision of its architecture. The most widely accepted theory is that it was built as some sort of temple, with the main axis of its concentric circles aligned on the midsummer sunrise. But its significance and use has led to a raging debate, particularly over the last two decades. At the summer solstice in 1988, druids, white witches and New Age travellers were banned from the site after 30,000 people turned up in an attempt to hold a free festival. It led to angry clashes and fresh debate about rights of access. Although there was no known connection between the druids and the stones until the 17th century, they continued to press their claims, and after holding a small ceremony for the winter solstice here last year, a select few now look likely to be allowed back and other representatives from a variety of groups will be able to join them. The other 10,000 who are expected to turn up will have to respect the normal four-mile exclusion zone around the prehistoric site. For some living nearby who have vivid memories of the 80s, it could be an uneasy time. Well, I'm joined now by Emma Restelor, who's Joint Chief of uh, British Druid Orders, and also by Kevin and Sandy Carlin, who are the High Priest and Priestess of the British White Witches. First of all, Emma, to you, why have you got a right to be here as a Druid? Druidry for me is a mystical spirituality, and one which, at the core, um, searches for inspiration. And much of that inspiration we find in the interplay between Earth and Sky, the interplay between spirit and matter. And a temple like this, a place like this, which is so beautiful and so perfectly aligned um, to mo so many stellar, lunar, or solar um, moments, is uh, something which is very strong um, in, in the way that we practice our druidry. The way that I feel that I have a right to be here is no more a right than anyone else has a right to be here. As a druid, I feel very strongly a need to be here. Um, at, at various times in the year, but I don't feel any right more than anyone else. Now, there has been some debate, hasn't there, among the various communities that use this site. Kevin and Sandy, who I believe got here in a Volvo, not on a broomstick, why, do you feel, <laughs> why did you feel you could be here at this site in the summer solstice? So basically, we feel that this site is very important to um, religious groups, uh, individuals, um, practitioners of earth magic, pagans, druids, all sorts of people that um, would worship the forces of nature and as one of the main centres of worship um, in this country um, we feel there should be a cross-section of druids, pagans, which is basically anybody that wants to worship here um, without conflict between different groups and without controversy with them who can get in and who can't. But what, why certain groups though? Why can't everybody have access to you? Think? Everybody can have access. Um, the thing is that we are actually talking in a way, we're negotiating so that everybody can have access. There are a few groups who want to have private space, and those groups who want private space know that they don't want, that you know that that's not valid at very important times. And that's what you're hoping to move towards too, Sandy? That's right. We, we hope that this is going to be open to all who wish to come and worship on this special solar days of the year. Okay, that's great. I'm joined also this morning by Clues Everard from English Heritage. Um, why have you decided to resolve this debate at this stage? Why is it important to move it on, do you think? Well, it's not just at this stage, it's a combination of years of work um, trying to move things forward. We, what we're trying to do is move things forward in a way that we don't ever uh, return to the past. Um, 
we try to ensure that there, there, there is access for everyone. And other than at June the 21st, really, groups come from um, a very wide variety of um, the community. Um, Emma and, and Kevin and Sandy represent just one part of, of people who have an interest. There could be local residents, archaeologists, astronomers, and um, other pagan groups, other druid groups. What we're trying to do is find a way forward. Um, this year, if it goes ahead and no decision has been made, then um, what we will try and do is do it with a limited number. I, I mean, I use the word proportional representation, but if we can try and find some way that allows a, a broad spectrum of people access, then that is a step in the right direction. Now, I know the Millennium's a Christian festival, but presumably you've got to get it right before then, because this is going to be a, set, a focus, presumably. Absolutely. I mean, the thing is, whatever we do has got to be steps for the future, uh, building on what we've, what we've learnt from the past, and ensuring that the bad experiences of the past are turned into positives and become good experiences, because we've learnt from them. Well, uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed for June the 21st. It all goes off peacefully here. Thank you very much, all of you, for joining us uh, at this incredible spot this morning. And now it's back to the studio.